the film's directed by Fritz Lang, and one of the other influences in film noir is, of course, German Expressionism, and the 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 immigration to the United States. You know, whether it's Fred Zinnemann or Fritz Lang or Bertolt Brecht, Thomas Mann was living here, Leon Fuchsvanger was living here. There's a whole community of uh, of, of German immigrants, a German immigrant community in Hollywood, and it was a very rich cultural period. So Fritz Lang brings to it a complete, consummate, formalist knowledge of German Expressionist cinema and cinema seen in a very formal way, a very European way. That's why these decisions to have these two women up at the front of the film kind of assault you with their assertiveness and their, the power of their individuality and their personality, that's not by accident. Mr. Lagana, I know it's late, wake him up. Tell him it's Tom Duncan's widow. That's there intentionally. And that's a formalist approach to scenario and, and, and filmmaking. Vance! I'm in one. Let's get him. It's him! The women are fascinating in the big heat. Mr. Lagana is an excellent life insurance agent. What's the trouble? Why, nothing, officer. This is Police Sergeant Banyan. Sorry, Sergeant. We got a call, there was trouble. Sergeant Banyan, oh, I'm sorry. It's ex-sergeant, isn't it? He'll be leaving with you, officer. Women who had experience, particularly in the United States, of being in, in, in the workplace and in the defense industries, on the aircraft lines. So when, uh, when Gloria Graham says, hey, you'll do. You'll do. Or get it yourself, you know, or Katie, uh, you know, shares his cigarette, takes his drink right at the beginning of the film. It almost seems like Fritz Lang wanted to serve notice that real life in this country right now, women are this way in relationship to men, that there's a new equivalence. And so he sets it in the front of the film so that your orientation is totally different. So within that frame, which is actually a much more interesting frame, you have the story of endemic corruption in a police department and one cop who breaks all boundaries and has independent value system and will go up into the face of authority, uh, whereas everybody else is, uh, all his other co-workers are in one way or another passively accepting. You're under suspension. Well, you better check with Lagana first. He might not approve. I'll have your badge and gun, now. You can have it permanently. One moment. I ask for your gun, too. That doesn't belong to the department. It's mine. That kind of a hero always uh, influenced me early on in, in some of my earlier, some of my, my own earlier work. And it's, it's kind of a standard. Uh, I mean, later on in the 80s, people would call these kind of guys existential heroes. But it is the clarity and, and, and simplicity of his choices as, um, as his wife says to him, uh, as Katie says to him, uh, why don't you no, go ahead and lead with your chin. Just keep leading with your chin. Don't you compromise. That's what I wanted to hear you, sir. Don't worry about the safety. Don't conform. Uh, uh, you have your own internalized, authentic, hard-won um, morality and you're going to go ahead and confront the unnamed city's police department with it. There's an interesting sidelight to this, which is that the ethnic stereotyping in the film has uh, Banyan, apparently Irish, and the, the immigrant is the, uh, is the organized crime figure who has this kind of this control over, 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 over the city. I grew up in Chicago, and the, the Chicago administration of the police department was also very Irish, but it was, it was, it was this wonderful populist uh, kind of corruption. And it was typically Chicago, where if you were a citizen of the city of Chicago, you had the same inalienable right as any other citizen to bribe an Irish cop. I mean, that was the... So the, 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 the institutions of the city were notoriously corrupt, uh, but... And the organized crime component was actually multi-ethnic. That was the experience in Chicago. It's easy to look at, at, at the big heat today 
And and you know we we react to uh, I I thought Gloria Graham is fantastic you know and Glenn Ford's fantastic but it must have been a hell of a shock in 1952 when this picture came out to have women that forward. Everybody's walking out on me tonight. What do you have? I don't know. You I think. Vince Stone chase you after me? You saw him leave me in the bar like an old beer or something. Come on, let's find out. I mean, if it's you, I'm after. The uh, kind of events that occur in this film uh, didn't occur in Hollywood movies before film noir. They try to assassinate Glenn Ford. They miss. They blow up his wife. I remember the very first time I saw the, the, the Big Heat. What a shocking surprise. Pictures didn't do that. You knew enough to know that those kind of things happen in life, but pictures didn't do that. The kind of, of, of grim reality that can happen in existence is now suddenly in, main, in mainstream Hollywood cinema. And that, that's, that's also film noir. It has various other characteristics, chiaroscuro lighting, particularly, and very deep focus, seeing things that are going on in the foreground, seeing things that are going on in the background, the influence of Orson Welles and Citizen Kane. Uh, you know, so there are characteristics to, to film noir, but it, it's, it's way more than just a style of, of, of lighting or a visual form. <laughs> film noir generally, I believe, proceeds from the, uh, from the experience of, of, of the Second World War and the uh, kind of shattering of illusions, of uh, transcendental absolutes, of uh, moral values, particularly in Western, Western culture. In other words, it's the same event that produced uh, existentialism in France, a general awareness that, the, that real reality is uh, hard, tough, has no absolutes, there are no transcendental moral values. Um, that it is that life, in fact, is a struggle, and um, there is not much meaning other than what you put to it if you're going to live authentically. If you live inauthentically, then you'd accept the status quo, you'd accept uh, the standard values, and you would you know, blindly walk a, a predetermined path. Uh, and many of those uh, themes are, are apparent in the choices behind the story of the, of, of the Big Heat. Some of this, I think, precedes the Second World War in terms of confronting death as, as something to look in the face for what it is. And, you know, whether it's Hemingway writing Death in the Afternoon or, or Keynes saying that, that the end of every story is death, which takes back, these, these are thoughts from the 30s. And again, it, it, it's, it's the human experience encountering something like the Great Depression from whence comes the hard-boiled novel. So the hard-boiled novel and that, that, uh, that perspective on, on, on fiction and real life on the streets in a strict definition of noir. In fact, The Big Heat really isn't a noir film. There, there is a hopelessness to a noir film. The Big Heat version of, of uh, noir, or Hollywood's version of noir, in a way, is, is a world in which there is plenitude. Um, it's the sets, like the set design of Lee Marvin's apartment, the set decoration. It's, it's cynicism in, a, in, a, in an arena of abundance. And America was abundant. In 1950, the American economy was over 50 percent of the world GNP. The whole rest of the world barely equaled the power of the American economy. There's characteristics of noir. Its base is in some kind of individual's character in confrontation with other forces. Now, either he is removed from them because he is fully conscious and independent, in which case there's a concomitant kind of a loneliness in the way the outcome usually works out. Um, or he's somebody who fails to live. And so then the perspective of the film is just a slice of life into here's the way reality is. So the film, like Double Indemnity, is saying this is human motivation. This is the way life is. This is the way the world works.
fascinating, a tremendous break. It's beautiful, beautiful work. I mean, it's all inspirational. You can close your file on the Bertha Duncan killing. Fritz Lang is bringing all of this to us. And so, so it, it's film-wide done by a great master. There's nothing, nothing to be better.